The Palo Press for core strength and stability. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the exercise first. We're going to break it down into the muscles that are working and the anatomy that's involved. We're going to look at why we would use it and what it's doing within the body. And then we'll rebuild it back into the exercise um, and give you a few more teaching points, reps and sets towards the end of the video so you can perform it correctly and get the most from it. If you want to build core strength and stability, if you're a beginner and you want to go from a beginner core strength to a advanced core strength in 12 weeks, just click the link below. Go through to my How to Build Core Strength and Stability 12 week online program. And it starts completely body weight for the first 12 weeks. You don't need any equipment. And then as you gain more confidence and you may then decide to buy some equipment, the intermediate and advanced workout open up and then you can start using all the different bits of equipment. We've got kettlebells, we've got resistance bands, we've got gym balls, so on and so forth, dumbbells, all sorts. So uh, click the link below and you can get started today. The Palov Press is uh, a great exercise for the entire abdominal, but what you will find is it will bias one side over the other, and also you will get mainly uh, in the center of the abdominals, but there will be the obliques working as well. So the exercise itself, you need a cable machine and then what you do is you hold the handle in front of you and then it looks very simple but then you push the weight away from you. And what you find is how the, how the exercise works is as you extend that lever and push the arm away from you. What you'll find is the abdominals will compress around the spine to stop you from being pulled in like so. So what you're doing is you're trying to resist that rotation to get pulled back in. So what you don't want to do is get pulled around by it. So you need to start at a weight that is suitable to be able to hold that posture and push you away. The only other important thing is what you're not doing is you're not pushing it like that. You're pushing it away so the cable should stay the same distance from here to here all the way through the movement. So you're pushing it away and coming back. Next we've got the anatomy and the function. Now I've started to mention it before. Essentially it's the entire torso that's working. So we've got rectus abdominis down the middle, we've got the obliques, there will be partly QL working, there will be the erector spinae muscles working or the spinal erectors working, um, internal external obliques so you'll get the deeper ones as well. Now with regards to um, the function of it, it's doing Two things. We've got um, sort of an anti-rotation. So what the muscles are trying to do is they're trying to hold you in this position. Like I mentioned before in the last part, when you go through the exercise and you push out here, what the weight wants to do is pull you in like that or pull you towards it like that. So what you're doing with your whole body, including the feet, is you're holding your body in position. You're pushing away and then you're bringing back. So the lever is what makes the, ex the exercise much harder. So when you're performing it, again, you can sort of start here and then you can build all the way out to a straight arm. But as I mentioned, there are two things happening. One is the anti-rotation, so the, the ability to not go into that position and resist that rotation. So in some regards, there's very much an eccentric part of the contraction, although it's an isometric, but because the, uh, the torso wants to twist this way, your muscles have got to hold it in position. So it, it will kind of be like a diagonal across the body, stopping that rotation. And then obviously as you change sides, it will change. So what you will find is that from one side, it'll obviously be on one side. And then when you change sides, it will go to the other side of the body. The second thing that it works really well is certainly more for the, um, for the QL and the spinal erectors is the lateral shear on the spine. So if, if I just... This is the front of my spine and this is the back of my spine. So as you look at me, so if I put it down here, now what happens is when I push that weight, when I push that weight away like that, what it's doing and what a lateral shear is, is where my vertebra want to sort of go in opposite directions and sort of go to one side. That's known as a lateral shear. An anterior shear, you, again, you may have heard me talk about this before, is where it wants to drop off the front. A lateral shear is where it wants to drop off the side. So again, the muscles of the torso, so the spinal erectors, the QL, in some respects the psoas, will be holding the vertebra on top of each other. 
So there will be a, a, a lateral shear force pulling it that way, but the muscles will be pulling it that way, keeping it on top. Now, if your spine doesn't like lateral shear, then you may experience some discomfort here. So in that regard, it's useful to not do the exercise. So you're getting a number of things from the muscles. So when you, when you go to the push out here, you've got all the abdominal wall here holding the torso in place. But what you've also got on a much more specific level, which is um, much more concentrated to the area, is when you come into here and you push away, you've also got the muscles that surround the spine, the spinal erectors, the QL, and some, some respects the psoas, that will be managing those lateral forces and really holding the spine in place. So you get a, a, a sort of an entire workaround from the core. And then again, as I mentioned, as you turn around, it will, um, uh, it will change sides that it's working. So that is the anatomy. So you get in all the muscles around and the function, which is the anti-rotation and the uh, management and, um, of lateral shear. So how do we perform this exercise correctly? Obviously you've seen me do it, but what I'm gonna do now is kind of go from the feet up and teach you how to go through and perform the exercise correctly. So what we do, obviously we need to take the weight, but what we first thing we need is a good stance. That's the first thing we need. So we don't wanna be sort of here like uh, uh, with a very narrow stance because then it's much easier to get pulled over. So we come into this position, we have a good stance. Now obviously most of the weight is going through the leg that is on the side of the cable because that's the direction that it's pulling me. So this will give me activation through the lateral musculature of the hip and in some respects to the side of the torso. So I'm in this position, then what I'm doing, now I would always tend to have the inside arm supported by the outside arm and then push away. If you wanna have it the other way, it's not too much of a problem which hand is actually holding it because they're gonna both be supporting it. I just tend to do it this way. So we would hold here, again, we wanna have a slight hinge of the hip, so we're not completely upright, we just sort of sat back on the hip about 5%. So again, we're getting um, uh, muscles in and around the hip activated when we hinge the hip. So we come into that position, I've got a slight bend of the knee, so I'm in a solid start position. Obviously, I'm gonna start by bracing the abdominals, and in some respects, the, the, the exercise will start that anyway, and then I'm gonna push away slowly, and then I'm gonna hold for a second or two, and then I'm gonna come back. And you wanna be able to feel the muscles activating as you go out. If you go too fast, you'll miss all of that. But if you go slow enough, you'll feel the compression as you go out and as you come back. And again, the stance needs to be strong, so as you go out, it's gonna to wanna to pull you more. So again, your legs gotta work that little bit harder. You wanna choose a suitable weight that keeps you somewhat centered. If you're too heavy, you're gonna be leaning into it too much, or it's gonna be pulling you that way too much. So we wanna find the right weight. So it's not about just always putting the weight up, putting the weight up, putting the weight up. It's about holding the posture, pushing out and coming back, pushing out and coming back and holding the position. The only other thing, if you are using a cable machine, when you bring the cable off the stack, you can't really see it on this machine. In fact, if I do it here, you may be able to see it. And I'm gonna do it without, um, without the handle, so please forgive me. But basically, you can see that's raised up. Now, when I push away, that wants to stay relatively level. So again, I'm not doing that. I'm just pushing away and coming back like so. So there we've got the Paloff press. That's how we're building core strength and core stability. It's a very simple exercise, but a very effective exercise. We want a solid stance. We get all the muscles of the, uh, of the hip working. Then we want a sort of a 5% hip hinge. We want to hold on tight. We want to push away, feel the compression. So we push away slowly and then we come back slowly. So again, it starts to release itself. We want to find the right weight so we're not getting pulled around by it. And also when we push away, we want the weight stack to stay relatively um, still. If it does move up and down, it's not too much of a problem. 
Many thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and uh, learned something from it, please do just click the like below, subscribe, hit the bell icon. It would be great to have you as a subscriber. And if you do want to build core strength and stability in 12 weeks and go from a beginner to advanced, then please do click the link below, go through to my how to build core strength and stability online 12 week program. It would be great working with you.